So today we're checking out the Skydio 2, which is a drone that promises to fly itself autonomously because of some fancy technology that it has built in. At first, I thought, eh, it's a gimmick, not interested, but enough people have told me it's actually pretty awesome. So I went ahead, bought one, and we're gonna be going over the things I love about it, some of its limitations and the issues I've had with it. But before we do, let's check out some footage that it got completely on its own of our buddy, Oscar. Now me personally, I was completely blown away at how well it was able to keep up with Oscar at those speeds with all these obstacles. I mean, if you fly a lot of drones, you know how hard it is to fly backwards while tracking a fast moving subject, especially when there's obstacles all around you. But this thing is set up with cameras all around it to really be able to navigate its environment. The way this thing tracks and flies and avoids obstacles, it's really amazing. But I'll give you a little spoiler, it's not quite perfect. All right, so finally we have received the Skydio 2. Got a little letter. Skydio 2 represents over five years of work by our team to build a drone that has enough autonomy and intelligence to make flying drones more useful, more fun, and less stressful for everyone. Now this Skydio 2 has been out for a little while, but this is designed to fly autonomous. Autonomous, how do you say that? Autonomous. Um... Autonomy. Yes. Autonomously. It doesn't even come with a controller. Well, you can get a controller, but I was like, Psh, this is the future drone. We don't need a controller here. Does it just follow you around? Well, apparently you can carry this beacon around and it just follows you around. So even if it loses you visually, it has some sort of signal to tell it to keep following you. But what if like you wanted to fly it out somewhere? Honestly, I don't even know how to use this thing at all. I guess the battery just kind of snaps and whoa. It's magnetic and there's no latch. I don't know if I trust that. I mean, it sure as hell makes it easy, but I don't know. There's a little trust issue I have. Dylan, you want to tell us about today's sponsor? Our sponsor today is, I don't know, who is it? Uh, maybe we don't have one. I don't know, there was someone on the comments I was saying, I'm starting to think Dylan's really only here to do the sponsor segment. So if we don't have a sponsor, then will I just start to disappear? You can go home, yeah. Here, I got you a gift. Uh, of course, we need some future glasses to go with our future drone. Hey, so. it's those glasses from like two episodes What's up? Do you feel super cool right now? I have hella friends, man. What are you talking about? You actually control the drone with the glass. You go, ding, 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 and fly over there. <laughs> Nuclear strike. <laughs> I'm gonna throw all this crap on the charger and uh, let's go out for a little flight. I'm not gonna lie, I feel pretty cool right now. So this is the USB type C charger and it just gets sandwiched in between the two batteries magnetically of course. Very cool. Now this here is the beacon. Now there's three different ways to control this thing with the phone app which I'm not expecting much range out of and then the standard two stick controller for more of that traditional manual flight experience. But the beacon it's really unique because you can throw it in your pocket. It shares the GPS data with the drone so if it loses sight of you or loses track of you it knows where you are and eventually it'll come back and find you. All right so now I have it so it's gonna track me from the front. So now I don't even need this vlog camera anymore. I could just vlog like this. I'm gonna put this beacon in my pocket. Let's see what it's gonna do if I turn and there's a pole right there. Please don't hit it and oh my gosh. Okay, oh my god. Okay, I'm getting so freaking nervous. Here, let me show you. It's just barely dodging those tree branches. <laughs> Apparently it knows, oh my gosh. All right, I'm slowly starting to understand how this thing works. And let's pick up the pace a little bit. Man, this thing actually hauls. All right, Dylan, you're up. You know those video games where you have like the sidekick that's like a robot that kind of follows you around? You should try to imagine that it has a machine gun on it and you're trying to get away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you impressed, Dylan? Just like a sci-fi movie. <laughs> You wanna try to lose it in this parking lot, Carrie? <laughs> Holy crap! It's really on you. It actually like skipped over me to keep catch up to you. Oh, wait, it slowed down. Did I get away? No. Nope. Oh, 
Holy crap, I can't believe how well it's following you. Right? If this was any other drone, it probably would have crashed like 10 times and would have lost us way long ago. Can I hit it? Ah! <laughs> that was a little delayed. I could have definitely hit it. Yeah. If, uh, the important thing is that it hasn't crashed yet. All right, here I'm going to have it stay on the left of me because there's no people on this side. And let's see if I can just go and have it dodge these trees while it's flying sideways, which is honestly pretty difficult and sketchy to do. I'm sure you see the foreground trees, but there's also trees behind it too. So it's weaving and <laughs> It's impressive. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. This is really impressive, isn't it? It is. I mean, oh wow. It is having no problem staying up with us. And you know, a lot of other active tracks or whatever, as soon as there's foreground and if I were to hide behind a car for a few seconds, it'll totally lose me. But here, it's holding on to me just fine. I mean, I'm starting to gain some confidence in this thing. It definitely takes time to gain confidence. Like, doesn't it seem like at any moment it's gonna crash? Yeah. <laughs> Let me go ahead and position it more that way here. So this is pretty easy. The only thing I'm adjusting on here is distance and the angle I want. And watch, it's gonna go in between these trees right here. Yeah, no problem. Oh my God, it just like goes so fast straight towards objects, doesn't it? Yeah. It really makes you think it's about to crash, but then at the last second, it'll know how to maneuver around it. And right. I'm really surprised how well it's flying considering how windy it is right now. I got some cars coming behind me, so I'm gonna just make some space and have it go to the right of me. I accidentally hit the left, so I probably went all the way, but there. Now I can get it over where I can visually see there's nobody over there. It took me a couple flights, but I'm starting to learn how to trust this thing. Yeah, it's cool. This controller, once you get used to the beacon, it's pretty handy. I just kind of generally tell it, hey, go on to my left. And then I can see that there's no one really in front of me here. So let's go in front now and uh, get that angle while it dodges that tree. Do you see how close it got to that palm tree? And it's yeah. just like, I know. Look, I'm vlogging with no hands. <laughs> Can't you just do that with a tripod? Honestly, I'm having a pretty good time flying this thing. Well, I'm not even flying it. It's just kind of flying itself and uh, yeah, I dig it. What if this was just how I vlogged every day? Just, hey, let's go here and ride. And then, then we just vlog like this. Pretty convenient, right? They actually don't say do not hand catch. They actually said in a tutorial, like this is how you hand catch it. All right, so this is gonna be one of the trickiest environments, I think with all the little twigs and leaves. One thing to keep in mind is that it's not that quick at booting up. You have to turn it on. It says it's syncing GPS. So finally, it says it's ready to launch. I have this uh, really skinny stick here and I wanna just kind of leave this over here and see if it's gonna hit it on its way up. Oh, definitely did a little maneuver, didn't it? Yeah, I did. So I could just do manual steering. Can I just crash this straight into this tree? No, it goes around it. All right, I'm gonna try to fly it into this little branch right here. It won't let me do it. Right now, I'm literally just trying to fly it around and crash it into things, but it just, it won't crash. It's really solid in terms of its obstacle avoidance. I haven't even heard the propeller touch anything yet. You would think I would be able to at least clip one of these thin little branches around here. <laughs> so if you want to whack it with a stick, it'll let you do that. Dude, you're so close to the propellers. You're about to scratch your lens. <laughs> it doesn't really back up. It just like goes up higher, like yeah. away, not, not, not backwards. All right, let's try to find the thinnest stick we can. All right, this little stick right here. Oh, 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 hey, oh, what? whoa. It just landed itself on the case. That's kind of crazy. It literally just went back and found the case and just landed itself. Oh, low battery. I like how it just did it on its own. We're over here looking for sticks. <laughs> is it because it took off from that is why it came I out? think it's a combination of return to home. And then if it's coming down for a landing and it sees that shape on the top of the case, oh. it's designed to land on it. The website has some really good tutorial videos, which if you decide to get this, definitely check that out before you go flying but it says that if I generally land and it detects that case it should lock onto it and land so let's try that out oh yeah see so it detects that case right there and just perfect oh I got it <laughs> so it is possible to crash yeah I 
I've never felt so accomplished to crash a drone. But basically what we did is we went around and we all looked for the skinniest stick we can find. And I planted it right here in the dirt where it's going to be hard for it to see. It blends in with everything else. I had to fly it straight towards it and it eventually clipped it and was taken down. So that generally answers my question about how hard is it to crash this thing and how good is the obstacle avoidance. I would say it's by far the best obstacle avoidance I've ever seen and the, the way it dodges obstacles and the way it tracks with the beacon. It's insanely good, but you can still crash. So you do have to be kind of careful still. Does it still fly? And we're good again. No, I like how you're backing yeah, away now. now, 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 now that you know that. Right. I think also at faster speeds, it's probably a bit more vulnerable. Now it is also an option to just get the drone by itself even without this beacon. So you just control it all from your phone. So let's check out this app real quick. And I'm gonna take off and I have my basic controls down here on the bottom so I can see all of us and I can have it swing to the right and adjust the height as well. But at least in my experience, I can't get too much range out of this. This feels so wrong to fly a drone backwards because that's the easiest way to crash. It does give me resistance when I try to fly through somewhat tight spaces. It does definitely require a decent size opening before it wants to fly through it, which is totally understandable. But yeah, I mean, this is the type of flying you can do with your phone and of course you can have it do some tracking for you i'll have it track frank here and now it's just getting him but since he doesn't have a beacon it's pretty easy to lose it so already it lost him so if you need some serious tracking definitely definitely get that beacon if you double tap somewhere it'll fly to there so let's go right there it's just gonna fly right over to there. It's fun and cool now, but give it like 10 years and it's gonna be hunting us down. <laughs> okay, so right now I'm at 4K24, but I have the option to go 4K30, 48, and 60. And it looks like I can't use HDR when I'm on 24. As soon as I hop into 30, the HDR option turns on. So one thing I did need to do is adjust the height floor to disabled. If you have it turned on, it'll stay at least eight feet above the ground, which is probably safer. But then it does seem to have a really hard time getting through tighter spaces and following you is gonna lose you much faster. So I have that disabled here. We also have our shots like Vortex, Droney, and Rocket. Let's try Rocket because right above us is a bunch of trees just going up. Man, it's getting up in there. I mean, this is the only drone I would ever trust to do a rocket in a place like this. Now this brings us back to our ride with Oscar. We've done enough testing, we've built confidence in it, and we just told him, go for it. And this thing was no joke. There was no holding back. It stayed up with him perfectly fine. And I told him, you can just go ahead and ignore the drone. Don't worry about crashing it or anything like that. And it 100% delivered. Now if there's anything I didn't love was that the tracking is so quick and responsive that every time Oscar jumps, there's this jerky nod that happens. But if I just warp stabilize it out a little bit, here's how that looks. Did it's keeping up with you pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it was a narrow path that I was coming down to. Like that shot where it got it from the front. Yeah, and then it gets over these trees and catches up to you. I mean, it makes it really dynamic because sometimes if I have somebody recording me, it looks like I'm moving slow, but it gets some cool shots in there for sure. Yeah. It did really good, honestly. I know how to operate a drone, but uh, some of my friends don't. And sometimes we want to get shots where we're all kind of riding and it makes it really difficult to have to pass it to somebody that doesn't know how to control it. And if they're sitting there, they're gonna lose range pretty quick. Exactly. So then they're gonna be like, oh, lost connection to the drone. So we went ahead and got all the shots we wanted and never at any point was I really concerned about the drone crashing. I mean, sure, we have proven that it can crash into a thin twig, but generally I've noticed that anytime there's a thin twig, usually it's in a bundle or a bush and it's very easy for the drone to see it. Now on the ride back, there was a part of a trail that had all these cables going through it. And you know, I avoided flying it there for that reason on the way up but on the way back we were just like you know what let's push it and see what happens and of course it hit these cables right here coming off the side which is no surprise we were pushing our luck there so we weren't really disappointed it was kind of to be expected but the drone is still fine but the main takeaway from this is stay away from really thin things that are out there by themselves but once you start training yourself to look out for different things that could be a problem for the skydio 
it's actually not so hard. So overall, even though it did crash on this ride, it was something that we were expecting. After doing some of these tests, I will say the Skydio is very, very cool. I actually really enjoyed using something that really prioritizes the autonomous flight. It definitely took me quite a bit of time to really trust in the drone, but once I did, I was able to just get it up in the air and then just do whatever for 15, 20 minutes and really stop worrying and stressing about the drone up in the air. But there was a point where the Skydio got kind of confused here. And I think it's because my GPS signal was really weak because I was right next to the cliff. And then at a point it flew off. I think the fact that we were right up against the cliff really threw it off because it was getting like the GPS signal and it wasn't sure if we were at the top of the cliff or at the bottom, I'm not sure. But at least I wasn't too concerned about it crashing into anything. I just was wondering, where the hell is that thing going? Took a second for it to realize, oh, there we are. And then it stuck to us pretty well afterwards. But when we were walking alongside, it seemed like it had no problems. And again, also when we were up top, it seemed perfectly fine. But yeah, what do you think, Dylan? Dylan's gone. He's in Vegas right now. He's partying. What, Vegas? I didn't hear anything about Vegas. He's been gone for a couple of days already. How about Sam? I haven't seen him in a minute. Sam, he's still working on that Netflix show. Oh. He's uh, moving up in the world, doing some special stuff. Yeah. yeah, unlike other people I know. Why, why do you look at me? like when No, I'm looking over here. I'm looking at the screen. Yeah, I'm on that screen. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm stuck with your ass. It's all good. I don't eat much. Uh, okay, well, Frank, what do you think of some of these shots? I was just impressed on how well it avoided all the trees and how well it followed us. It really does what it's supposed to do, and that is to track you and to avoid obstacles. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything else There's nothing that else do like that. that, no. But I think what I feel like I'm missing right now is that manual control, but I think once I get this controller, it should help with that. Something like this would replace my Mavic, but I need to hold on to the controller and fly with the controller and see how that feels first before investing in it. So buy the controller and I'll come over again. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, the camera quality also seems not bad, right? I mean, it, it, though... it's good. It's good enough for me. Some people would want to push the, the, the quality a little bit more and get more out of it. But I think for an average user like myself, I'm okay with this. Uh, you should also keep in mind that this isn't a drone that should really be flown in the dark. Right around this point is when I started getting messages on my beacon saying, oh, there's not enough light, so land soon. But that makes sense. Yeah, because it can't see the trees and the poles around it. I mean, if I'm operating the sticks, I'm never flying sideways or backwards this fast with these many obstacles around. These aren't easy shots to get here. And you go ride your boosted board. All yeah, the yeah, time. no, no, no. I, I would, I would use it. I would use it. Yeah. Have you ever used Active Track to chase yourself on a boosted board? I have, and you can only really just go in a straight, straight line, and, and, and make sure it. there's nothing yeah, there's in the nothing foreground. In the way, yeah. Yeah, and also- if And it's you're always kind of like ways. looking back. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You don't yeah. trust it as much as this. There's this example they have on their website with, next to the DJI, and of course, you know, it's on Skydio's site, so they're gonna make the Skydio look really good, but you know, this is a pretty accurate representation of what the DJI would do. I mean, I have no doubt that it would get stuck here, and if it didn't get stuck here, it would probably get stuck right here around this turn, right? It's very easy to go underneath the drone and have it lose you. Oh, here's a little example of some of the technology that is going on. You can see it's actually building out this 3D map with some fancy NVIDIA graphics thing. The technology in there is just insane. And this drone's been out for a while. You know, I just have been very slow to review things. That's just my channel now. I just review things that have been out for a really long time. <laughs> I guess the question is, who is this really, really for? If you want this drone to follow you and not worry about it, it's for you this drone is for you. How about if you were trying to get those cinematic images? And I think that with the controller, you're going to be able to control it the way you want, but there is less camera controls. I mean, what, the Air 2 has a one inch sensor, so you're probably gonna get the better sensor. You get 10 bit out of it in a log setting. It also collapses smaller, the Mavic 2 versus the Skydio. Yeah, the Skydio being fixed, it definitely is a little bit harder to transport, but you don't also have to carry a controller either. This is all just through the phone. Now, usually whenever I hear, oh, you're gonna control 
control a drone with a phone app, I'm like, ah, oh, no, not again. But this was decent because it's not so much trying to use these little button controls to try to fly something on your phone. You're just telling it, hey, fly here. Oh, do this, track Dylan. Now here it does lose Dylan here for a second. Now if he had the beacon on him, it would have definitely kept tabs on him. But yeah, you can escape it pretty easily when it's just visual. So beacon is something I would 100% recommend. Going into price a little bit though, the starter is 1349 where you only control it with the phone. I think the beacon is really what makes it. And I went ahead and bought the sports, which is 1799. And that comes with some extra batteries and a beacon in that case. That's the thing. Thing though with this price point you can get like a high-end drone that is true like something with a really nice camera on and all that but it won't have the tracking ability yes this i know nothing i know has this tracking. nothing has this yeah track. at least do you think there's gonna be a skydio 3 with like a one inch sensor and like a really good controller yeah, that'd be tempting. Or in a lower price range. <laughs> yeah. Like for example, Mavic Mini is what, a $400 drone? So that is a good beginner drone, but at the same time, you really have to learn how to use it. You have to know how to use the sticks and it, it takes a little bit of training. And if you fly backwards or sideways, you can hit a tree or anything very easily. You know, you have to be very conscious of where the sensors are on something like a Mavic. And I do think I am gonna go ahead and get the controller too, because then I could get a little bit more of that smooth control you know with the phone or with the beacon you're kind of stuck with these hard buttons it's like turn to the left you can't do a smooth pan it's gonna go Urgh. Right now, the 36 mile per hour autonomous speed, that's pretty impressive. I mean, you could go cycling or mountain biking and you'll probably be within that speed range. But once you get onto like, you know, the motor sports, then you might just leave it in the dust. And we have a 23 minute battery life. Now that is one thing I have noticed that it is a shorter battery life. Now, 23 minutes, that's still not bad, but I think we've gotten kind of spoiled with the 30, 35 minute flight times we get out of some of the DJIs. But I mean, I guess it all makes sense. I mean, how much computing power is this drone doing? And we also have a 3.5 kilometer range, which in most cases it's plenty. But again, I think a lot of the DJI drones go way further than that and sound 50% quieter. I would say it was decently quiet. It's pretty quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised about that. For me, whenever I'm going out and flying, I, I'm very cautious of not trying to disturb everyone that's trying to just hang out there. So the sound is a big factor. And that 3.5, that's with the controller, correct? Oh, it must be because if it's the phone with just its Wi-Fi, yeah, it's you could still see the drone as it's the phone's losing signal. But overall, I'm pretty excited about this. Like now that I'm starting to learn a little bit more about its limitations and when I could trust it and when I shouldn't trust it, I'm starting to really enjoy using it. And, and they mentioned that it's a stress-free experience that they were trying to do. And I think they've done that. You know, any drone that I take off and you know, if it doesn't have this level of technology in it, I, there's some stress involved. And here is the part of the video where we're like, like awkwardly trying to figure out what the best way to end it is. Um, Frank, you got any ideas? Bye-bye.